I'd like to call this Saline City Council meeting to order. If you'd please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, members present this evening are myself, Mayor Morrow, Council Members Gearbaugh, Saibo Koenig, Rhodes, Roth, Tahar, and Dillon. From city staff, we have City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, City Treasurer Bennett, Police Chief Rennick, Parks and Rec Director Scruggs, uh, Business Ambassador Korfman, Technology Support Coordinator Schonk, and our DPW Director, Mr. Fordyce. For the rest of you who are present this evening, if you please sign in in the back, we would appreciate that. You do have um, two supplementals at your seat this evening. One is a traffic control order dated May the, well actually maybe it doesn't have a date on it, um, the 12th, excuse me, the date of filing is May the 12th, 2015. Um, this is slightly different from the one that was included in your packet. There are a few additional streets. And then second is a resolution, um, and the only change in the resolution is the date in the last line of the third, now therefore let it be resolved. The date changed from, I believe, May the 15th to May the 22nd. Um, so unless there are questions or unless there are amendments to the agenda, I would seek a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. So moved. Moved by Mr. Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. All those in favor of approving the agenda as distributed, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. There are no citizen, or there, excuse me, there are no absences this evening, so we will dispense with that. There are citizens present. There may be some comments. Um, and we come to citizen comments on agenda items. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested, but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Are there any citizen comments? Thank you, Mrs. Hess. Are there any other citizen comments on agenda items? No, then we move on to the consent agenda. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, any item may, may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Move to approve Mr. Mayor. Nope. Mr. Roth, yes. I'd like to have C-1591 and 92 removed for further discussion. All right. Um, and then let's also say C14123. The topics for all three are the same topic. Okay. They will all appear then as the first three items under new business. 
Um, so Mr. Roth has removed the last three items from the consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, would you like to offer a motion now to approve the consent agenda as amended? So moved. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig. All those in, uh, in favor of approving the consent agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to the uh, first action item of the evening, which is a public hearing. This is item 15-93. This is a special assessment for fire protection for fiscal year 2015-2016. The first motion will be a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Moved by Gearbaugh to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig. All those in favor of opening the public hearing at um, 745, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Public hearing is now open, affording anyone from the public an opportunity to speak. Are there any comments from the public? Move to close. Second. It's been properly moved by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig and seconded by Council Member Gearbaugh to close the public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The public hearing is closed at 7.46 p.m. The third motion will be a motion to approve and adopt or not adopt resolution number two, uh, special assessment for fire protection 2015-2016, approving the estimated amount in, th in the, uh, the estimated amount of, excuse me, I apologize, $341,773 for fire protection for fiscal year 2015-2016. Move to approve and adopt. Thank you, Council Member Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Roth. Is there any discussion? Well, I, I know I'm a broken record on, on this particular subject, but I feel compelled to comment as uh, a longtime member of the fire board and actually as the, the current chair of uh, the Salini Area Fire Board. Um, needless to say, if we had to administer and fund a fire department on our own, it would cost um, a significant amount more than $341,773. Um, and I think I speak for um, all my colleagues and, and all of the citizens of, of this this great community when I say that uh, our department is exceptionally well led um, and has a great group of, of dedicated um, staff members and so we're very lucky to be serviced by them um, and uh, it goes without saying that I, I enthusiastically support the motion that's been moved by your boss seconded by Roth. Is there any subsequent discussion? No, then we'll proceed to vote. Um, all those in favor of approving and adopting signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business. The first item is C-15-91. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the May 13th memo from Deputy Treasurer McDonough regarding the fiscal year 16 LDFA 1 budget, Shelton Industrial Park, and the fiscal year 16 LDFA 2 budget, Sauk Trail Business Park, and to approve and adopt the fiscal year 16 LDFA 1 and LDFA 2 budgets as submitted. Move to approve. Move to approve and adopt. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Gearbaugh. Mr. or Council Member Roth, did you have a question? Yeah, my discussion item, the one to bring up for discussion, is says continuation of approved projects. And I look at this money that's come in under these different categories as really being taxpayers' money. It should go like almost into the general fund, but it's treated kind of separately. And projects are funded pretty much through these committees and it doesn't say what they are when we looked at the approved budget and the only say the council has is by approving a budget. So I just want to say, want to caution that part of my concept of how this money works is kind of like it happens without the council's approval. Our only approval is approving their budgets. And going ahead looking toward the future for especially spending nearly $300,000 or more for the Merchant Park which is on private property and money's coming out of these funds, I think is kind of misappropriate and not doing the due diligence of taxpayers' monies. That's the item I wanted to bring up. Okay. Ms. Bennett, do you care to comment? Thank you. 
Any subsequent discussion or comments? Well, Mr. Gearbo, please. I'm just, uh, the reason why I supported this movement, as I do every time, the SALT trail, um, the LDFAs, basically those funds are reinvested within those industrial parks themselves. So it's really trying to help maintain the roads, the streets, the sewers, whatever else within those. So that money is not necessarily spent for other projects. And I do agree with Mr. Roth in the case of what we spend our TIFA on, we have to be more objective and more consideration taken by council. But in this case, I think the LDFAs are pretty straightforward. And so the funds that are there are used to support those operations to keep them viable. Mr. Roth, did you have a comment? Yes, just wait, it's listed here. It says committed continuing projects. Now that I'd like to have for the breakdown instead of just a kind of card blank, we approve of, it. Those are projects that we don't have at this time. So each year, when we do the budget process, we look at what the needs are in the project and then we look at If well, what I'm looking for is for as far as my like, far as contributions from Mer Merchant Park, that type of stuff. I, is that spelled out? Is that separate then when we look at That's this? Not an LDFA. Okay. Yeah. Right. And to be clear, Councilmember Roth, the proposed improvements to Merchant um, Park would be coming out of TIFA, not LDFA one or LDFA two. I say it concerned all three as far as committed. Okay. But I still I still feel strongly that the, these type of arrangements that they have is kind of some way help or taking away from some projects that the taxpayers funding that should maybe, you know, kind of diverting the council other than it's just okay, we approve a budget. Anything further? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's been properly moved by Rhodes, seconded by Gearbaugh to uh, approve and adopt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to C-15-92. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the May 13th, 2015 memo from Deputy Treasurer McDonough regarding fiscal year 16 TIFA budget and to approve and adopt the 2016 TIFA budget as submitted. Move to approve and adopt. Thank you, Mr. Har. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Seibel Koenig. I'll get you on the next one, Councilwoman Dillon. Uh, any discussion or comments? Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, as Mr. Roth had mentioned, I too um, am kind of concerned at the price tag that's for merchant price and after discussion tonight, I know we've identified it in here, but we have yet to approve any contract or any type of um, final cost for that. So at this point, it's just a place marker. But uh, again, I agree that we need to look at how we are and what we are going to be spending on that um, improvement. Thank you. Absolutely. And just to reiterate, that will be a discussion item that I will be looking for consensus on at our next meeting on June the 1st. Anything further? No, then it's been properly moved by Tahar, seconded by Saibo Koenig to approve and adopt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. The third motion will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the May, uh, the May 2015 memo from Deputy Treasurer McDonough regarding the third amended FY15 TIFA budget and to approve and adopt the third amended FY15 TIFA budget as submitted. So moved. To approve and adopt, sir? Yes. Thank you, Councilmember Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving and adopting signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 15-94. This is public works access control upgrade. This will be a motion to acknowledge the memo dated May the 7th, 2015 from Technology Support Coordinator Schock and to approve, uh, to approve or not to approve the personnel controlled entry into various city buildings and sensitive areas and to authorize or not authorize the bid for Cam Camtronics in the amount of $4,991.76. Move to approve and authorize. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Rhodes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. Mr. Schock, do you care to make any comments, sir?
Questions? Mr. Gearbaugh. What's the capability of expanding it to other buildings? It would support every building. And any idea what a kind of a cost? I'm thinking the farm, the depot, anything else? It's really site specific. I think we were looking at that large building. Okay. I didn't know how it was, whether it was just upgrading the lock system and such, or if it was the actual um, other parts of it. So, okay. But it would be nice to have everything consistent so we didn't have to. Can we stick on that question for just a moment? Because um, I know we've discussed this casually at, at, at uh, past meetings. I would be in favor of having an assessment done on the Depot Museum and, and Rencher Farm. Um, not saying I'm beholden to, 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 to expending the resources to, to make it happen, but I'd like to see an assessment done on those two sites. And I, I guess I would uh, encourage staff to proceed in that direction unless there are objections from the dais. Mr. Rhodes? Not an objection, but just a question with respect to Rentschler Farm. Would it be just the farmhouse, or would it include all of the other buildings that are on that site? Mr. Gearbaugh, what, what would your I, thoughts be? I mean, we just need to improve. Just like we're doing here, we just need to improve what we have as security and make it concerned. I think it's more the issues probably where we would be storing any kind of exhibits or things that potentially could be um, taken, multiple which buildings. multiple buildings. So we may need to look at some of the other buildings, yeah. But not necessarily the one open sheds or some of those things where the animals are. So I mean, yeah. I'm like, if somebody steals a chicken, we'll replace a chicken. All right. So maybe we can do an analysis then on, on those properties as well. I'm not hearing any objections. Very good. Um, I'm sorry to digress. Um, Mr. Gearbaugh, did you have any additional questions, sir? No, that was just it. Okay. Any other uh, questions from the dais? Mr. Sean, thank you, sir. Yep, Appreciate thank you. it. Any subsequent discussion? Well, then we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Rhodes, seconded by Dillon, to approve and to authorize. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Um, the next uh, business item is 15-95. This is Target Market Analysis Memorandum of Understanding. This is a series of two motions. The first motion will be a motion to acknowledge the memo dated May the 7th, 2015 from Business Ambassador Corfman and to approve or not to approve the Target Market Analysis Memorandum of Understanding and to authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. Is there a motion? I'll move to acknowledge the memo. Okay. Been properly moved by Gearbaugh to acknowledge the memo dated May the 7th, 2015. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Roth. Ms. Corfman, do you care to comment? Um, and then we'll open it up for, for questions. As part of our target market analysis application, we applied for a, up to a 50% match from the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, which we did receive. And Ms. Delry they highly recommend that we do a memorandum of understanding so that it protects our community in case one of the other partner communities doesn't follow through with their part of the grant that we're not left paying for their expense. Very good. Are there questions for Ms. Corfman? No? Okay. Well, then let's proceed to vote then on Mr. Gearbaugh. Oh, I'm sorry, Council Member Rhodes. No, I just have some comments, not necessarily questions. Um, well, do you so, want to uh, articulate those comments now, or do you want to articulate them at a subsequent motion? Take them now, I think. Take I, think, them now. I think take them now okay. because it might influence some yep, things. Yep, the floor is yours. Um, there are three uh, locations that were mentioned for the city of Saline to be included in this uh, target market evaluation, and uh, one of those we already have um, the developer identified, and that process is moving forward, so there, there's no need to do a target market analysis on that site. This, one of the other sites, the one on Maple, there's some interest from someone, and again, I, I don't think we need to spend our money to do a target market analysis. Um, third, third site, I don't know about that one yet, but I don't... I, I think we should leave it up to the market and let the developer who is interested in putting their funds into that site decide what kind of housing they want to put on that site rather than for us to tell somebody. And then the other concern that I had is if we don't do something within three years that we've got to repay some money. And so I, I was interested in this when it first came up to us last year, but at present time, based on what I understand of it and what I see here, I, I don't wish to support any of it. Okay. Do you care to comment at all? 
Well, we can take off one of those options that we had on there. That was just what we were putting on the table, so to speak, at that time. But our, and it's in the proposal that we received, but we can change that um, to add or subtract or however we want to do that. Yeah, I, I don't know of any other sites within the city that we would add, so we're left with one site. And I don't know, I, I hate to say here to the developer, here's what you need to build on that site. So anyway, thank that's you. my thought. Thank you, Mayor for Tim Rhodes. Mr. Campbell, do you care to comment, sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple quick reminders because it has been a protracted amount of time since this came before you all. Um, just a couple things um, that this, uh, through MISTA, you may recall, um, when communities have the, these total market uh, analysis completed, that essentially gives them points, if you will, for potential development using MISTA funds down the road. Um, um, and then also, as far as the, the two additional locations, 207 Monroe and 600 Maple, uh, that, again, since time passed, right, before uh, when those were directed to be included, um, we didn't have any interest at that point. Um, but even having said that, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Kathy, is that I believe they included those and no additional charge. Correct. So Correct. even if we took them out, there would be the same the same cost as all. What so if we didn't do anything? I'm sorry? What if we don't do anything? Well, then then we would step out and then they would mm -hmm. have, to, those three communities would, would have to absorb us not being part of it. Yeah, see, I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a bit concerned about spending $5,000 or target market analysis of one site when I don't know if that's going to apply to a future development or not anyway. I, well, know. we can broaden what we're doing so it doesn't have to be just one site. We could say the whole city or we could say that site plus part of the city. I mean, it's up to us to tell them what we want them to target. But at this point in time, we're not committed to participation at all, right? We, just we, we received the grant agreement in um, right. this memorandum of understanding we need to sign. So if we decide to back out, then we need to let the city of Dexter know and right. um, proceed from there. Yeah. There's no ramification, right? Yeah. Council Member Gearbox. Um, I agree with Mr. Rose in terms of potentially looking at one site, but I'm not convinced that the other two sites are deadlocked into what potentially could happen to them because there are a significant amount of hoops and things that are going to have to be jumped through. So I see no problem going aboard with this to continue. As, and the fact is we've already kind of agreed with the other three communities that we were going to move forward on this. But also I think this target analysis would potentially be more focused to try and get Michigan Avenue done, especially now with the construction and everything happening. So um, from my perspective, I still think all three properties should still be considered. Additional comments? Well, let me, let me just say this, uh, and then we'll proceed to, to vote on the first motion and see if there's um, desire to, uh, to offer a subsequent motion. Um, I, I'm really ambivalent on this, um, and I use that word deliberately. Um, I can concur with Council Member Rhodes to a point. I think that um, the first property, um, our listing on Monroe Street, um, one could make a legitimate argument to remove that from consideration. Um, however, I, I agree with Council Member um, Gearbaugh, um, at least as it relates to the Maple Road property, that although we have one individual who's shown some interest of late, um, I'm not as confident that something tangible will, will transpire um, in the near future. So um, I can see this both ways, um, but I, I certainly would have no hesitation dropping the first property while... Um, continuing to include the, the second and third. Mr. Roth. I'm looking at far as the market, target market analysis, if there's four partners or three partners, data was provided for such. If we go four partners, it's gonna cost the city's lien $8,000, regardless how many parcels we look at, we're looking at. I think that since we got a realtor, realtor should also do marketing analysis. That person's supposed to market it for us, and I think I've, I concur with Mr. Rhodes. I think we need not spend this $8,000, our match, be a part of the group. So I think it should go as three partners and without Celine. 
The $8,000 was based on a proposal of $35,000. We received one for $30,000, so that $8,000 will drop, plus the grant pays for half of our cost. So you're looking about $3,500. That would come out of pocket for us. Well, the, what information you provide for is definitely an error. Well, that was an estimate before we received the proposal. Well, so, tonight's tonight, and you had the proposal, so it's not updated. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Anything further? Mr. Hart. Um, I don't, I guess the, the Monroe Street property, although planning is moving forward and, and uh, there's definite intent expressed, nothing is finished until it's finished. And that is a property with some um, challenges, as we've seen. Um, so I, I, if there's no additional cost, I don't see any reason to pull it out. Anything further? All right, well, let's proceed with the, uh, the first motion, which was moved by Gearboss, seconded by Roth, uh, to acknowledge receipt of the memo dated May the 7th, 2015. Actually, we'll, we'll extend it unless there's objections from Council Member Gearbot to Mr. Roth. This is my mistake. The motion should really be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the memo dated May the 7th, 2015 from Business Ambassador Cortman. You comfortable with that, Mr. Gearbot? Yeah, I'm absolutely. sorry. Mr. Roth, you're okay yes. with that? Okay. Yes. Thank my you. apologies. Um, all those in favor of acknowledging receipt, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. I say have it. The motion carries unanimously. Um, next, the chair will entertain a motion to approve or not to approve the target market analysis memo memorandum of understanding and to authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign. Move to approve. Thank you, Council Member Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Tahar. Discussion? No discussion? Then we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of approving signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Just one nay? Okay. Okay. Uh, the second motion, motion B, will be a motion to acknowledge the memo dated May the 7th, 2015 from Business Ambassador Korfman and to approve or not to approve the target market analysis project proposal as submitted. Move to approve. Thank you, Council Member Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Dillon. Any discussion? No discussion. Then we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Gearbaugh, seconded by Dillon to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries. We move on to new business item 15-96. This is Little Free Libraries. This will be a motion to acknowledge the memo dated May the 12th, 2015 from Parks and Rec Director Scruggs and to approve or not to approve the installation of Little Free Library boxes in Saline. Move to approve. Thank you, Councilwoman Seibel Koenig. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. Ms. Scruggs, would you care to comment at all? inviting um, Ms. Cameron to the podium with me as well. This is um, her idea. This is Ms. Cameron. Um, uh, she approached us uh, to the Park Commission and um, made a, a very compelling uh, proposal to install um, these free library bo um, boxes. And I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, we have three of them in Celine. One at your house on, on uh, Detroit Street, one by McNaughton and Gunn, and another one on Hall Street um, by the Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. And um, essentially, it's it's a just a, a, a box that is waterproof and it holds library books where people can put some in, take one out, and it um, essentially it encourages literacy and sharing and community and. Um, the Park Commission was enthusiastic about this idea. Um, the proposal was to put them in um, some of our, our parks. And um, I, I worked with um, my staff and, and discussed it and worked with our Park Commission to, to identify some of the, of the potential locations. And um, in the memorandum, um, I did um, include those potential sites. One is not a park, but I figured City Hall might be a a nice location to have one of these books be, or boxes. Um, but I, I would like to invite, if that's all right, to Please. have Ms. Cameron talk about this and her idea. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, basically, these are um, boxes with books. 
and um, the idea, again, to promote literacy, access to books, and my idea of the city parks was having had children go through um, recreation that there are not only the children playing, but half a zillion little siblings running around uh, in the parks, parents there. Uh, in our area, there are certainly uh, within the city a lot of walkers, joggers who stop and look. And uh, it's been pretty exciting at, at our site with the, with the uh, neighborhood uh, little boys. I am, uh, we do have an Eagle Scout uh, applicant with Celine Troop 446, and it is his proposal to um, attain Eagle Scout by taking on this uh, project. And uh, we will all be working together. We have the, the sites. It's up to him, uh, Grayson Knapp, to create the, um, the budget to get the materials to include his troop members in the construction and installation of these. And we'd find out exactly where to put them, working with Carla. And then I am also part of the uh, 212 Arts Center, and they, we've been keeping them updated. And at our lab, they meet regularly artists, professional and amateur artists. And uh, it was proposed, I just updated them if there was interest. And uh, one of the individuals has her own art studio and said once the boxes are finished, why not bring them to the studio and the members could come. Um, so it would look nice, you know, they would be painted um, very well. And it's my proposal as far as uh, the Eagle Scout, it's his one shot to create the, or develop these, install these with his troop, uh, and then he's done. And then my proposal was, well, as far as maintenance, that uh, as a volunteer in the city, that I would take that on, unless there's some wonderful community group that wants to take that, feel free, but um, you would want to know that who's going to maintain these, who's going to check on them, and my proposal is that's what I would do. Um, we would have an initial start with um, the Celine used library, uh, getting some of those, and the troop would be doing their own um, kind of a book drive, a, an internal book drive with other troops to, to get the initial number of books and then the idea is people drop them off, take them, drop them off, and it's perpetuating. So it started in Wisconsin and it spread like, not quite wildfire because burning, but uh, they're very popular. Um, they create interest um, and would be something uh, promoting mm -hmm. arts and culture. In, in the city, and I think the city parks would be a wonderful location for these. Could I, could I say yeah. just another mm -hmm. uh, quick, quick note? Um, I did want to make note that um, the, the Arts and Culture Commission was also consulted. Um, there wasn't a quorum that day, so they did, there was no action um, taken, but they, th there was discussion, and it was fairly positive, if I could. Maybe yes, Mr. Mayor. Har could. Mr. Mayor, may I? Please. Yes, yes. Um, the, the, um, I actually raised this little question with, with Ms. Scruggs in wearing my now familiar to you all um, wordsmith hat. Um, the, the Arts and Culture Committee was very interested in this project. It was a discussion within the group, and there was a lot of positive response but no official action was asked on our part. So the, the wording in the, in the memo might, might lead you to believe that. So it's just a point of clarification. Thank you. And, and just to, in conclusion, I, as you can see, this is kind of a, a community project. You know, we're involving uh, our, some of our business owners, the Eagle Scouts, a, a private citizen, the parks. Um, I, I think this is a really, a really neat project. Yeah, I, so. think, it's, I think it's great. And I, uh, I'm indebted to you for your your, your leadership and and uh, um, commitment to, to seeing this come to fruition. Um, I, and I think they look great. Um, I didn't realize there's a third on Hall Street, so I'm gonna have to go and check yes, that out. Um, the, the the books that are contained within the the, the boxes are, are books for all ages, correct? Um, 
They could, there, you could make a choice. My proposal, it would be a mixed adult okay. and children. Okay, and eclectic topics. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need to get your husband's book on the Valley Farm that in there. That would be a okay. good idea. Okay, very Thank good. You. That's my suggestion. <laughs> okay. What questions are there from the dais? That sounds like a great idea. Okay. Mr. Hart? So it's a librarian question, of course. So did I understand correctly that part of the scouts portion can self-contain part of the project is to um, put together the initial stock of books that will be in the in the box? Yes, that's the proposal, his proposal okay. that he would um, do okay. an initial. So it's start. not just building, but it's also filling. Correct. Not just building and installing, but also Correct. stocking. Okay. He was Thank nervous you. about painting, and I figured that out. He said that he's not an artist, uh, so we figured that out. That the um, two twelve art center members would would be part of that. The Thank only you. question we have not specifically resolved yet is that we have the option of either being registered with the little free libraries the staff organization, organization or like mine, just do it on our own, I'd have to call it something else. And actually the scout came up with a nifty name. He said, uh, books to go, or books on the go, which I really liked. So we haven't, if, if anyone has a strong, um, I don't have a strong feeling. I think we can just go on our own. It's just being registered and you have to pay $40 per box to be registered so everyone around the country knows where those are. Um, uh, I'm just throwing that out if, if the group uh, council has a strong feeling, and I didn't know if, if you did as far as being registered with <clears throat> and getting the plaque. The other ones do, the, the, um, the other two um, within the city of Saline do have, you get the, the plaque. The so it's $40 plaques. per box then? Per Correct, okay. which is not up to you folks. It was just what we would have to add to the budget and I wasn't sure that that was needed. I mean, we have ours and is it per year or just one time? Only? One time. Okay. Um, so I don't feel that strongly one way or the other. Ms. Sabo, can you, please? I don't have super strong feelings either, though. I wonder if there isn't some value to belonging to a national sort of mm -hmm. organization and, you know, there are people who travel to all the Walmarts where you can camp. Maybe there are people <laughs> who travel to explore little free libraries in small towns, and maybe someone visiting would appreciate knowing where, and, and that website it's, or that organization website, would be the place yeah. to start looking for that. That's so a good those, point. That's my, one of my thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Anything else, Mr. Rhodes? Uh, just a question on being that these are scattered around and going to be in parks. Inevitably, at some point, somebody's going to do some vandalism mm -hmm. to one of these, and the initial Eagle Scout candidate is finished with his process. Mm -hmm. He's out of the picture. Mm -hmm. Who's going to replace, repair the damaged unit? First of all, I think that's a, it's a point to bring up. Um, second of all, it's when you read the articles about it, it's amazing that there is so little of that type with, with um, the little libraries, inner cities around the country, there the history, the experience in the last six years is there has been so little. Um, to um, answer your question, that would I assume be up to me to uh, figure um, out uh, how to how to get this um, repaired. It seemed like I even had another point, but I'm losing it. So. Um, I, I don't think there, there has not been experience with that. Um, it's like we have statues around here. We have artwork throughout the city, and I guess that could be a concern. Um, but we're still going to put them up, I guess, is my feeling. It's, uh, we're not, I feel not being afraid. Um, I have, we also have a statue by ours, right by the street. And um, I don't want to be afraid of that happening. And then we don't put up community artwork. We don't put out these um, pieces. Point taken, but okay. if I answered, um, I'll, if, I'm if I'm checking on them regularly, I'd have to do something about that. 
Anything else, Mr. Hart? Well, I would just comment, add to that. I would, I, I would assume that um, site selection within the parks would be critical. Yes. Um, placing them in highly visible, well lit, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it spots is, it would, is a known would be fact a deterrent. That the more people that are using our parks, using our facilities, the less vandalism that occurs. But I agree that it would, that it would blow you away what <laughs> happens. <laughs> Ladies, thank you both. Appreciate it very much. If there's nothing further, it's been properly moved by Saibo Koenig and seconded by Dylan to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you again. We move on to new business item 1597. This is state historical marker. This will be a motion to acknowledge the memo dated May the 12th, 2015 from Parks and Rec Director Scruggs and to approve or not to approve the request to submit the application for the Michigan historical marker application for a registered historic sites and the $200 application fee. Move to approve. Thank Sorry. you, Ms. Tahar. Seconded by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig. I didn't get <laughs> Ms. Scruggs, do you care to comment at all? Uh, yeah, uh, just briefly. Um, actually, I have uh, Jim Peters, who you all are familiar with, but he's he's been um, the, a good leader in this whole project and and uh, has prepared a lot of the information. And if if you'd like to, yeah. <laughs> Former Council Member Peters, current Park Commissioner, we would welcome you to please to the day please if come you'd up like to make, or to the podium if you'd like to make a comment. I'll make a cup. I'll make a quick couple of comments. Um, like I said, um, Mr. Peters has, has done a lot of the legwork. Um, uh, we've, we've actually gone to several of the commissions, um, the historic district, or historic district, Saline historic. historic, help me. Saline Historic Society. Society, thank you. Uh, the Arts and Culture Commission, the Parks Commission. Uh, we've talked with uh, city staff about this project. Um, this is something that, um, is of great interest um, to kind of shed some enlightenment on what Celine is and where Celine came from and some history of Celine. Um, uh, Celine is extremely historic, uh, dating back to the Paleo Indian ages, and we've had wars, uh, encampments around here. We've had uh, lots of. Um, creatures like mastodons and saber-toothed tigers and whatnot. And this kind of um, would, would bring this to the downtown area. Um, we've uh, done a lot of the research to s try to get a, a state historic marker. And in my um, memorandum, we do have a couple here in Saline. Um, and I forgot to mark where Curtis, they are. Curtis the, House. the Curtis House and Presbyterian the Presbyterian Church has these markers currently. Um, it is, it's a very, very long process. Um, there's an application that has to be made and along with an application fee, then it is uh, reviewed and um, brought back saying, yes, we will allow you to do this. And then uh, I guess Eastern Michigan University um, is works with the state to create the language, the, the wording on these markers. Um, and obviously, city council would have an opportunity to approve the, the wording, um, and then it would be created. Um, but it, it's a very significant um, sign. And we've uh, designated a, an area um, by parking lot number four as uh, the proposed area. Um, currently, there's the the uh, Katrina dog house that's, that's right there. But um, that's what we would be, where we would be proposing to put that. So we don't want to have it down at the park, um, you know, saying Salt Springs Park or anything, but, but Salt Springs as, as a designation for the Saline area. Are you um, proposing that it would replace the dog house that's currently there? N no, it would be in that same general yeah, vicinity. Okay. And I, some of the technical questions, if you have any, I'm sure Mr. Peters would be happy to yeah. help. Mr. Peters, do you care to comment at all, sir? I think the Parks Director of Sprague covered it pretty well, other than to say that uh, Selene has a very interesting history due to Salt Springs, and it'd be nice to share some of the history with visitors and residents. Uh, you still come across people here in town who have no idea why we're called Selene or the history behind it. So I think it'd be a nice addition to town. It's been quite some time since we had a historic marker. 
And we're not asking for any money. This has all been covered by uh, donations and by uh, uh, funding from committees and commissions. So. Any question for Ms. Scruggs or Parks Commissioner Peters? No? Thank you both. Appreciate Thank your leadership you. on this very much, Thank Jim. You. Any subsequent discussion? Ms. Tahar. Yes, I would, I would just say in enthusiastically supporting this um, that um, the Arts and Culture Committee um, was very taken by the presentation, by the concept, and um, as the committee is, is working on um, defining our mission and defining goals, um, one of our goals, or one of our areas of, uh, that we believe is part, integral part of the arts and culture of the city of Saline is its history. So the committee is very pleased to be able to support this. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Any additional comments? No, then we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Tahar, seconded by Saibo Koenig to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 15-98. This is resolution to approve annexation of McDonald's. This is a motion to acknowledge receipt of the petition for annexation filed by James F. Russ, Jr., Senior Counsel for McDonald's, dated uh, April the 20th, 2015 and to approve and adopt or not adopt the resolution as submitted granting the petition filed by McDonald's annexing parcel three of land described in Exhibit A upon receipt of a certificate copy of resolution from the Charter Township of Pittsfield approving the release of the property from Pittsfield Township for annexation to the city and the fi filing of the approving resolution with the county clerk and the office of the Great Steel with the Secretary of State and further, to refer the zoning of the parcel to the City Planning Commission upon completion of the annexation process. Is there a motion? Move to approve and adopt. Thank you, Councilmember Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Rhodes. Um, Clerk Royal, do you care to go over um, your memorandum at all? Uh, if anybody has any questions, this is the detention pond that is behind the parcel, and it's just um, one lot that is not included into this city. So they're trying to get that put in to do a new drive through when they redo it. And as Mr. Gearbaugh may choose to comment, um, this issue has been brought up and discussed at, uh, at a previous planning commission meetings. Any questions for our city clerk? Mr. Roth. I was wondering, since we're asking for annexation there, that how about the other parcels from that township along that same section? I, I, they usually have to come to us and ask uh, to be annexed into the city. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just referring this in reference to the church that wanted to be annexed to the city, but there's parcels in between. Oh. And they went about it for a different process. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, the um, Keystone Church, uh, I believe Mr. Roth, you're referring to, where there's actually township properties in between. Um, well, it's kind of surrounded on, on what, three side, two sides um, of city, but there's also a long uh, um, piece of roadway that, that has a number of, of township properties that front on that. So the Boundary Commission is, is the route that they sought, um, and the Boundary Commission cannot make islands, and, and if they were to grant such for Keystone, for instance, they would create, um, this, a, a bit, create an island uh, with those existing um, houses and a church, uh, another church. Um, the this is a, one of the this was because it's just a it's contiguous to the city uh, would not be creating any islands, um, and this was uh, my understanding is uh, years ago um, the cons the consideration for approval was that for any future expansion that that detention that property where the detention pond is needed needs to come in. Uh, for for uh, for approval, and so so what they're proposed um, uh, the new the new drive through that they want to add um, in order for approval, they need to have that that uh, partial annexed into the city. Any additional comments or questions? No. Any subsequent discussion? Well, it's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Rhodes, to approve and adopt. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 15-99. This is millage rate for fiscal year 16 general appropriations act, our budget. 
This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the May 7, 2015 memo from Tr uh, City Treasurer Bennett regarding consideration of a millage for fiscal year 16 General Appropriations Act and to direct staff to utilize the millage rate for fiscal year 2015-2016 of 16.2800 mills. Move to approve. So you're just to acknowledge, acknowledge receipt. Yeah, you're sorry. just acknowledging yeah. receipt, Mayor Pro Tem Rhodes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Seconded by Council Member Gearbaugh. Ms. Bennett, do you care to make any comments at all? This is pretty self explanatory. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, any questions for staff? Any comments? No, then we'll proceed to vote. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. The motion uh, passes. Move on to new business item 15 100, proposed budget for fiscal year 16. Uh, which would run from 7 1 of 15 to 6 30 of 16, scheduling of public hearing. This will be a motion to acknowledge receive the May 7th, 2015 memo from Treasurer Bennett and to approve and adopt or not adopt the resolution as submitted, setting the public hearing on the proposed budget for fiscal year 2015 2016 on Monday, June the 1st, 2015 at 7 30 p.m., with public notice to be given according to law. Move to approve and adopt. Thank you, Councilmember Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Cybo Koenig. Any discussion on this? Again, pretty self-explanatory. Then we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Cybo Koenig to approve and adopt. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, we move on now to new business item 15-101, resolution to authorize issuance of sanitary sewer system revenue bonds. This will be a motion to approve and adopt or not to adopt the resolution to authorize the issuance of sanitary sewer system revenue bonds in the, in the sum not to exceed Three million six hundred thousand for a period of not to exceed thirty years. Move to approve and adopt. Thank you, Council Member Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Dillon. Ms. Bennett, do you care to comment on uh, on this issue? This is just the um, authorization to purchase the bonds for phase two of the water treatment plant that we've been discussing over the course of the past year or so. Correct. Thank you. Using the state revolving fund. Very good. Um, again, we have discussed this in the past, but the chair would entertain any questions you may have at this time. Any subsequent discussion? No, that's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Dillon, to approve and adopt. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to the discussion portion of our agenda. First up is commission, committee, and task force reports from council members. Mr. Rhodes. Um, my... Uh, Parks and Environmental Commissions both meet subsequent to this meeting, so I'll report on what happened previously. Parks Commission had a cleanup at Curtis Park on May the 9th that was well attended, not only by Parks Commissioners, but also by some citizens at large. Uh, a fair amount of effort was accomplished, even uh, between the rainstorms. We did a lot of scraping on the pavilion there and uh, planted a fair number of uh, daffodils and did some other miscellaneous cleanup. The um, Environmental Commission staffed a uh, table at the Farmer's Market this last Saturday and handed out a fair amount of literature, mostly to uh, youngsters, some of the uh, coloring books and other things that we had received so far free of charge. So um, that group is active also, and that's my reports. Thank you, sir. Additional Commission Committee or Task Force reports from Council Members? No, then we'll move on to reports and other announcements. Mr. Gearbaugh, please. Um, I'm not sure this all in. Uh, the mayor and I met with individuals of the Saline Township to discuss the potential of Adelaide Farms and the annexation and 425 agreement and so forth, and I think we had good discussions on that. I think we're all in agreement that whatever we can come up with as a reasonable agreement can be used as a template for future um, potential developments that would go forward. I think we all have the realization that growth will happen more likely in piecemeal but not in a a big development like Biltmore had proposed many years ago. Um, and I think what we're doing is both attempting, and I think this council will agree, is we're trying to look towards this regional approach and also benefiting each government agency. We're not trying to take anything, and they're not um, wanting to hold out for everything else. We know that we need to work together to make this a good plan, and I think um, we're moving forward on this. So um, hopefully when the additional studies and things come back that we've um, authorized, that maybe this will move forward and we can see some more additional growth. 
I think you reported that perfectly. Um, the only thing that I would add is that um, there are a few little tweaks and changes that we're going to make to um, uh, a proposed 425 agreement. Um, and I suspect sometime in the next couple months, Mr. Gearbaugh and I will, uh, will double back with Supervisor Marion and Trustee Marion to go over that document um, and then bring it uh, to our um, respective boards. Um, and like Councilmember Gearbaugh said, if, um, if there's consensus that uh, the 425 agreement that we've prepared is appropriate, then we hope that it can be used as a template um, for future annexation agreements. So we will, we will definitely keep you in the loop as, uh, as things transpire. Other reports and announcements? Mr. Rhodes. Just a miscellaneous announcement. It doesn't really fit anywhere. But I, I wanted to recognize a gentleman who has been covering our meetings for a while. And I understand this is the last one that he will be at, Austin Smith, because he is moving on to uh, greener pastures for himself. And I wanted to uh, thank him for his coverage of our, of our meetings. Well, let's give him a round of applause. You actually kind of stole my thunder, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I think I speak for everyone at the dais um, and everyone here at the city of Selene Austin when I say we appreciate and we respect your, uh, your fair and objective coverage of, of this community and this council specifically. Um, we're sorry to lose you, but uh, we know you're going on to, uh, to bigger and better things. It's a great opportunity. I, I wouldn't say it's bigger or better or greener. It's just yeah, different. Onto something different. Different. Well, we wish you the so best. Much. We know that uh, you will do very well. And I do have, if you want to come forward, I do have a small little token of our appreciation to you. And we wish you well for the future. Let's give him one more round of applause. Yay. Other reports and announcements. Well, I actually have another kind of fun one. I, um, I, on Friday evening, I actually felt bad because earlier this week I connected with um, Councilmember Rhodes to see if he had time to meet with me on Friday afternoon to discuss a whole host of issues. Um, and this is not out of character for Mr. Rhodes. He failed to acknowledge to me that it was his birthday. Um, well, I can tell you if it was my birthday, I wouldn't have met with, with anybody to discuss municipal issues. Um, but bless his heart, um, he puts the interest of the city uh, above himself, and so he, he graciously agreed to meet with me on his birthday. Um, and so, uh, because I took time on your birthday to meet with you, I thought I'd give you a little something today. Um, and we, of course, we all wish you a happy birthday. Hope you had a, a nice birthday on Friday and many more years of, uh, of health and happiness. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Don't eat it all in one place. <laughs> yeah, share it. <laughs> Any other reports and announcements? Well, then let's move on to two items that I think our DPW director is going to discuss, um, city sidewalks, and I think this is specifically relating to our upcoming project to do some, uh, some grinding um, to rectify, I think, <coughs> am I mistaken, Jeff, about 90% of the defects in our sidewalk inventory? Yes, it would okay. be uh, quite a bit of grinding, okay. um, a, a citywide program to uh, remove the uh, smaller trip hazards on uh, the entire <clears throat> network of city sidewalks. Um, these are the where you have one panel that tips a little bit and it creates a little vertical edge there. Um, any of those that are less than uh, an inch and a half are uh, eligible candidates for this grinding technique, which creates a, uh, an ADA acceptable uh, slope and uh, removes that little trip hazard. Uh, so separations bigger than that are not candidates for grinding, and of course other sidewalk issues such as cracks and spalling, and, um, those cannot be fixed with this method. So that program, um, the, um, the request for proposal for that is, is scheduled to be completed this week. We'll get that out for bids uh, next week, and um, next week, and then uh, two weeks for a bidding process, and then we can start uh, construction uh, late midsummer. Um, so real quick, Jeff, so that will appear as an action item before council then, probably our second meeting in June? Yeah. Okay. Um, hopefully second meeting in June, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, one good thing that has happened in the interim of uh, this whole discussion um, is that there are a few more firms that are offering this grinding technique now. So um, there will be uh, more, more contractors to choose from, a more competitive bidding environment. So that's, we're looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, 
so we had we did the survey we have all the locations noted um, that's part of be part of the the RFP and uh, then we'll just be able to turn this contractor loose very good okay well like I said then or like you said rather uh, we'll expect a, an action item to come before us most likely then at our second meeting in, in June yeah. very good Are there any questions for Jeff on this issue or mr. Fordyce rather no, then, uh, Mr. Forrest, why don't you also give us an update on the establishment of a community recycling location? <clears throat> um, so uh, I'm sure you recall when we established the new uh, curbside residential recycling program with the large carts, uh, there was um, broad uh, acceptance and excitement about the program. Um, I think the final figures were 97% of the people kept their carts um, and about three percent for various reasons returned their carts. Uh, this community recycling center is an effort to capture some of that three percent who um, did not hold on to their carts and so currently don't have a, a recycling option. So what we've established is uh, here in the city hall parking lot we have uh, four of the recycling carts. Uh, just recently created a flyer which I think you got a copy of on the table tonight. Um, is it? I don't know where mine is, but everyone else got one. Good. No, no, no. We're good, Mr. Portis. I have some extras. If okay. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll get copies of this um, over to the senior center, and I also have a list of all the addresses that returned their carts for various reasons. So I'm going to try to group those. Um, they tended to be uh, collections of um, attached condominiums where they had smaller garages and didn't feel. So I can get this information to those groups. If I may, I, I think the, the main areas were Park Place, the condos at, um, at Brecken Village, yep. um, and I'm missing one. No, there was another, another area. Uh, Echo Court, I think, was okay. there, were, there were a handful from okay. Echo Court. Yeah. So, um, so we'll get the word out there. There will be a, um, an article in the next FYI. Uh, we'll get, of course, we'll get information on um, Facebook, website, all that stuff. Um, right. Currently, um, there, there isn't any signage out there, so that signage uh, will be ordered this week to label that as a community recycling center. There'll be a copy of these acceptable material rules there. But we are able to take recyclables. You can take them there right now. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. I want to be able to announce this at the Senior Center on Wednesday. Thank you. Okay. Take these. Beautiful. Um, any questions for Mr. Fordyce regarding the um, community recycling station? No? Okay, very good. Appreciate your leadership on this. Glad this was able to come together. Mr. Gearball, please. I just noticed I was attempting to go to www.bceline.com, and that didn't bring up something. Is that supposed to be our, still our current? Celine? No, B. Celine, the marketing website that would have been oh, created back in 2009. No, this says www.bceline.com. So is that still a valid website? Uh, yes and no. Because um, <laughs> uh, it didn't, it, when I brought it up a couple days ago, it just was blank and it didn't redirect anywhere. Right. Uh, is, and I'm, I'm working with um, Mr. Shock, uh, but the, the, the software platform that that is built on is well out of date. And so we're working to try and, and move forward. However, the consideration you may recall from the, the CTAP grant, working with, with the Chamber, uh, Saline Area Chamber of Commerce, on the, the uh, Visit Saline site that, that's being worked on currently, um, the thought you may recall the discussion is the thought that the high probability that that may transition from B Saline to the Visit Saline site, because um, that would serve the purpose of B Saline plus more. Um, so um, that's my answer, and that's, so that's why it's difficult. I mean, we, we, we do, as staff, uh, we do uh, attempt to update it, but it has recently become difficult to do that because of the software mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. And so we're, um, uh, Mr. Shank is working on giving me a proposal to say this is what it would take in resources, whatever that be, time or money or whatever it might be, so we can evaluate and make that decision. That's fine. I just cool. that we probably should take it off the flyer. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be exactly. my suggestion. Yes. As long as right. it's not functioning, it should be removed from from uh, yeah. promotional material. And maybe in, uh, and working with with Mr. Fordyce, maybe it might be um, uh, a better spot on the the Celine B Green site. Maybe. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. 
I guess it is. I mean, there are. So, so maybe we just remove B. Celine. <laughs> Anything else on this issue? No, then our last discussion item this evening is mm -hmm. downtown parking enforcement. As you may recall, um, at the end of 2014, when we decided to um, begin um, enforcement of parking downtown effective January 1, we made a, a, a verbal commitment to our business owners and to our residents that we would um, review our policy on June the 1st. So uh, I'm just reminding you all of that. Um, and actually, this is an item that Mr. Rhodes and I spoke briefly about on Friday. Um, I actually believe what would be best is if we had a shorter work meeting on this subject on June the 1st, um, probably beginning at 6.30, possibly 6.45, um, for staff to, to share their comments and thoughts. Um, there's some data that I requested. Um, I would like to um, have the number of tickets broken down per lot per month. Um, I'm also curious to learn how many of the long-term passes were purchased um, in each one of the months uh, since we began enforcement. Um, and I also think that there's value in having a work meeting on this issue, one, because it's a little bit more casual and, and we can have more of a dialogue and discussion, but it would also afford um, our constituents, our residents, our business owners, the opportunity to attend and participate and comment on this issue. Um, and I guess my prerogative would be to follow a very similar approach to what we uh, utilized for the weight restriction on South Ann Arbor Street, which would be to have a, a work meeting on this issue, discuss it, then bring it back as a discussion item at the su subsequent motion and develop consensus, either, uh, 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 develop consensus as to whether or not we want to continue the, the current policy, the status quo, make some adjustment, adjustments or cease enforcement. So uh, I'm curious as to, to what other council members think uh, about this issue. Mr. Rhodes. Um, I, I concur with um, what the mayor said. I, we, have, we have an obligation to review our parking enforcement um, as we stated that we would in June um, to make sure that whatever it is that we do is the best that we can do given the resources that we have and the demands that we have on our parking. Anybody have any objection to having a 6.30 work meeting on June the 1st? No, nope, I think that's a good way. Okay. Mr. Tahar, you're okay with that? That's good, yes. Mr. Roth? Okay with it. Ms. Dillon? Okay. Um, besides the information that I have requested, which is a breakdown of how many tickets were issued each month in each one of the lots and the number of long-term passes that were purchased, what other data would, would council members like? Mr. Gearbaugh. Number of, number of hours officers are actually doing policing. Okay. Very good. Um, Anything else, Mr. Haar? Um, uh, if it's available, to, if there's a breakdown by time period when tickets are issued, more frequently at one time of the day versus another. Okay. Possible, Chief? Look into it. May, okay. okay. Ms. Dillon? How many tickets have been paid? Okay. That's... That can be, that information can be gathered, can it not, Chief? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No? Okay, well, if you think of, of any additional data points that, that you would require, please to, uh, direct those comments to, uh, to Mr. Campbell. Um, but again, um, and actually, evidently, can you make sure to make contact with, um, with uh, Riley at, at uh, Celine Main Street, and he can let uh, his members know that we'll be discussing this issue at 630 on June the 1st? Sure. Mayor, one other thing. Please. I'm not necessarily naming the names, but if individuals have received more than one ticket. Can that information be gathered? If a particular vehicle has received? Um, I might be able to give you what vehicle has received it, but I, I can't tell you what vehicle. No, oh, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just saying that. I'm just curious to see if multiple people have received multiple tickets. Sure. Or yeah. whatever else. Yeah. Mr. Rhodes? And, and I believe that our city manager is already... Um, gathering up the information about the available parking spaces that we have. And so that should be in the packet also. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So 6.30 then on, on June the 1st, um, we'll be discussing downtown parking. Okay. Anything further on that issue? Ms. Tahar? Um, have we already said which um, parking lots, frequency of violations by parking lot? Yeah, I wanted it broken down by month and by parking lot. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Again, if you have anything further on that particular issue, please direct your comments, questions to the city manager. Anything else to be brought up as a discussion item this evening? 
No, then we'll proceed to public comments. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Mary Hess, so many people ask me why I come and waste my three minutes telling my concerns. It's because I served with Mr. Beach and Mr. Anderson and citizens' comments were very important. On the US-12 renewal or refurbishing, I was wondering if we can also request some help on our police costs because there will be definitely an increase in burden on the police department with the turns and the stops and everything. And I, ex I figure if we can accept rejection, we can ask anything. Then on the uh, TIFA, which is handling the possible 250 stage or whatever, I guess I'm disappointed that with over a half million dollar budget, there still are five vacancies. Or no, I'm sorry, there were four absence and a vacancy, same as it was last year. And I would think the people that are serving would uh, want to sit on something with such a large budget. The other thing I'm requesting, is it going to be handed out uh, my concerns of the ordinances that have not been adhered to? I think that's a yes or no, or I will pay to have copies and disperse them again to all the council. Thank you, Mrs. Hess. Are there additional public comments? Any correspondence that uh, that you uh, supply to uh, to the city manager, Ms. Mrs. Hess, will be will be forwarded to each council member. Um, and I think this goes without saying, um, and I think our track record proves this: that we take public comments very seriously, and we greatly appreciate everybody who takes time out of their schedule to attend and participate uh, in our council meetings. Any other business to come before the city council this evening? No, then please note that we do have a work meeting on June the 1st at 6.30 to discuss downtown parking, a regular meeting at 7.30, and then a regular meeting on June the 15th at 7.30 p.m. There are no absences this evening, so we will dispense with that. So at this time, the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn at 9.53 p.m. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaz. Is there a second? Uh, 8.53. 8, I'm sorry. Even better. Okay. 8.53. My, my apologies. It's been moved by Gearbaz. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Dillon. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. This meeting is adjourned.